Welcome to the fourth lecture on module theory. Today we will discuss direct products and direct sums of modules. We start with the definition of direct product. You consider two modules M and N, then direct product of M and N, it is nothing but, as I said, it is just the Cartesian product. That means it is collection of these tuples x comma y where the first component x is coming from m and second component y is coming from n and then the question is can you make this cartesian product into an r module so answer is yes you can make this into an r module just by considering the r module structures on both m and n more precisely by considering component wise addition and scalar multiplication so that is you consider this vector x1 comma y1 and you consider another element in this uh, Cartesian product then you can add them component wise and in same fashion you can define scalar multiplication then you can verify that this addition and scalar multiplication it satisfies all the conditions in the definition of modules so this Cartesian product this set it is an R module and that R module we call it direct product of M and N this notion it can be generalized uh, into an arbitrary collection of R modules. So you consider here an arbitrary collection of R modules let us say M alpha where alpha is varying in gamma. So this gamma this collection it is indexed by this set gamma and we call it index set. So this index set it can be finite or infinite but we can always consider this Cartesian product that is just collection of these tuples where for each alpha belongs to gamma we just write the alpha component in this manner x sub alpha and that alpha component x alpha it is just coming from the corresponding r module m alpha and then in similar way you can make this Cartesian product into an r module just by considering component wise addition and scalar multiplication so here you consider this element alpha where is in gamma you consider another element whose alpha component is y alpha alpha where is in gamma then you can add them component wise so alpha component of this sum it is just x alpha plus y alpha where alpha is varying in gamma and in same way you can define scalar multiplication alpha where is in gamma then it is just r times x alpha so you can see that this summation this sum and this scalar multiplication it is happening inside m alpha so using the r module structures on each m alpha you can give an r module structure on this cartesian product and that r module we call it the direct product of this collection of r modules here are some special cases so you consider uh, direct product of r n many copies of r so then the index set that will be just this finite set 1 2 up to n and this is direct product of n many copies of r so a typical element it looks like r1 comma r2 up to rn where each component ri it is coming from r and then component wise addition and scalar multiplication that gives an R module structure on this set and this R module it is nothing but the free R module of rank n. So here you consider direct product of R how many copies that is indexed by this set the set of natural numbers it is just 1 2 3 so on. So this is a countable set element it looks like here r1 comma r2 comma r3 so on but your index set it can be uncountable also for example if you consider this set gamma is set of real numbers and you consider direct product of r how many copies that is indexed by the set of real numbers then a tip, then also a typical element we, we just write in this manner so alpha component is r sub alpha where alpha is varying in gamma and each r alpha it is it is an element of r 
And then you consider arbitrary collection of R modules, then we can have this direct product. So this proposition is saying that from this direct product to each component, you can have this natural projection map. So here you consider an element in this direct product, then you just map this element to its beta component. So its beta component is just x beta. And since addition and scalar multiplication in direct product it is defined component wise so you can verify that this natural projection map this is actually an R linear map and by definition this is surjective map why because you consider element in M beta then you can have this element always so beta component is X beta and all other components are 0 consider alpha where alpha not equal to beta then alpha component it is a zero element of m alpha so this natural projection map you can always have from direct product to each component and we use this natural projection maps to see that this direct product along with those natural projection maps uh, this satisfy the following universal property so here you consider arbitrary collection of R modules, then you can have this direct product along with this natural projection map. So this proposition is saying that you consider any R module M and suppose you have some arbitrary uh, collection of R module homomorphisms from M to each M beta, then you can have a unique R linear map from that R module M to the direct product such that this equality holds. In terms of diagram, we have this. You start with this arbitrary collection of R modules that is indexed by gamma, then you can have this direct product. And from direct product to each component, you can have this natural projection map. So this direct product along with this natural projection maps, this satisfy this universal property. What is that? So for any R module M, and for collection of R module homomorphisms from M to each M beta, you can have a unique R linear map from M to this direct product such that this diagram is committed. So you come this way or you come this way, both are same. So this is the universal property of direct product. In fact, we can define direct product in terms of these um, um, maps. So by universal property, we can define direct product in arbitrary category. And what is that? It is just an object. So direct product of these objects, it is, it is just object in that category along with these maps such that for any object M and for collection of homomorphisms from M to each M beta, you can have a unique map such that this diagram is committed. So let's prove this proposition. So we should prove both existence and uniqueness of this map such that this diagram is commutative. So you start with element of M, then we need to find its image. So we should keep in mind that image of X under this map, it is just a beta of X. But here we should find something so that the image of that element that should be a beta of x. So this pi beta it is just mapping each element to its beta component. So we can see the, the only choice we can have for beta component it is just a beta of x. So that means this element it should be its alpha component it should be f alpha of x and you vary alpha in gamma. Yeah. So this is the only choice for this map F such that this diagram is commutative. And now you can verify that this diagram is commuted. Why? Because the image under this pi beta, it is just a beta of X. So we can define a map F in this manner. I should write define now only thing it remains to prove that uh, 
that this map f is a linear map or it is an r module homomorphism because if you consider two elements x and y then you take their sum and you apply f it is just f alpha of x plus y that will be the alpha component and alpha varies in gamma since each f alpha it is a linear map so it preserves addition so this is f alpha of x and f alpha of y alpha varies in gamma and this is same as f alpha of x this element plus this element f alpha of y alpha varies in gamma and this is same as f of x plus f of y so if um, preserves addition and in same fashion you can prove that this map f it preserves scalar multiplication so this f it is a linear map and this diagram is commutative and we have argued that this is the only choice we can have for such map so that this diagram is committed so this is unique next we discuss direct sums so you consider again arbitrary collection of r modules then direct sum of those collection of r modules what is that so it is by definition it is as a set it is just collection of these tuples that means it is element of that direct product and now we are putting some restrictions on this uh, collection so what is that so we are putting this restriction that all but finally many components should be zero so that means ex uh, only finally many components can be non zero so except finally many components all components are zero so then this by definition so direct sum we denote in this way and this is a collection of these tuples such that we have this restriction so by definition this is just subset of direct product now once we prove that this is actually a sum module of this direct product then then this is an r module now why this is uh, this is a sum module of this direct product because we can see that this is a non empty subset of this direct product because we have that element that all components are zero so alpha component x alpha if you take it zero element of m alpha then that element it is always there in this set so this this is a non empty subset of this and then you can uh, prove that this is closed under addition and scalar multiplication so you consider two elements one is x alpha such that you have this condition that Uh, only finally many components can be non zero and you consider another element y alpha alpha varies in gamma such that you have that only finally many components are non zero then you add them then you have same property that only finally many components are non non zero and in same way you can prove that this is closed under scalar multiplication also so this is a sum module of this direct uh, product and that that means uh, it itself is an r module and that r module we call it direct sum of this collection of r modules so we have already noticed that by definition direct sum it is just sum module of uh, this direct product and we have equality here if and only that index set is finite so that means if you consider finite collection of r modules then it's then their direct sum it is same as direct product now in case of direct sum we consider this natural embedding so from each component from each m beta to direct sum of this collection of modules you can have a natural map and what is that so you call x beta yeah i should write just x beta this is an element of m beta and then its image we just denote j beta of x beta and what is that so by definition its beta component beta component is x beta and all other all other components are zero yeah. 
So alpha component where alpha not equal to beta that is just zero element of M alpha. So thus you can have this natural uh, embedding. So this is injective by construction and you can verify that this is R module homomorphism because addition and scalar multiplication here it is defined component wise. Now using this natural embedding map, we will give the universal property of direct sum. But before that, we should uh, have this remark. So you consider an arbitrary element in this direct sum and then you can see that that element you can write in this manner. So what is that? I should take this particular uh, example. Suppose your index set gamma is uh, this set of natural numbers then uh, any element it is just uh, you write in this manner x1 x2 so you are considering collection of these r modules m1 m2 m3 so on then their direct sum any typical element in the direct sum of this mi it is just x1 comma x2 so on up to xn and all components are 0. So n plus 1 onwards all components are 0 because we have that restriction that only finally many components can be non-zero. So then you can write this as x1 this plus 0 comma x2 so on. So this first element it is nothing but j1 of x1 and second element it is just j2 of x2 up to jn of xn yeah so that means each element of this direct sum i varies in this each element of this direct sum you can write in in terms of this finite sum So this observation, it justifies the terminology of direct sum, why we call uh, this as direct sum. And next we should have this universal property. So you consider arbitrary collection of R modules and then you can have this direct sum and from each component M beta to direct sum, you can have this natural embeddings. And then this proposition is saying that this direct sum along with this natural embeddings, they have this universal property. What is that? So for any R module M and for collection of R module homomorphisms from each M beta to M, you can have a unique R linear map from direct sum to that module M. So that this diagram is commutative. So you start with uh, here an element of this direct sum alpha varies in gamma then we need to find an image here so that this diagram is commutative. So then you can see that an obvious choice it should be that we can take this sum of f alpha of x alpha. Why? Because we have this collection of maps and each x alpha it is just element of m alpha then we can use the map f alpha so that that f alpha of x alpha that is an element of m and then that sum it makes sense that can then it seems that this is infinite sum but we have that restriction in the definition of direct sum that only finally many components can be non-zero so it is actually a finite sum so here you are varying alpha in gamma f in this way now we need to verify that this f uh, it is a linear map and this is unique so why it is uh, a linear so we should prove that f preserves addition. You will consider x alpha, alpha varies in gamma and you consider another element let's say y alpha, alpha varies in gamma 
that is sum of f alpha of x alpha plus y alpha and in this sum this summation it varies in over gamma and since each f alpha it is all linear so you have this and in same way you can prove that f preserves scalar multiplication also so this map f it is all linear map and by construction this should be uh, commutative why because you start with an element let's say uh, x beta or i should write uh, y beta then its image here it is just j beta of y beta then by definition of j beta so this is just uh, this element its beta component is y beta and all other components are 0 y beta then by this map f you are just getting y beta because only beta component is there and all other components are 0 so in this sum you have only one element that is f beta of y beta so you can see that this diagram is commutative And next, we should prove that um, this uh, all linear map it is unique. So I, I should leave that thing as exercise again, or or you can use this. Yeah, each element here you can write in this manner. So you can use this to prove uniqueness. So that means if you have another map, let's say uh, G here, such that this diagram is commutative then f should be same as g yeah. yeah next we should see the relation between direct sum and usual sum so we have discussed what is usual sum so you consider two sum modules let's say n1 and n2 of uh, m then that usual sum n1 plus n2 it is defined this is the by definition this is collection of this kind of elements x1 plus x2 where x1 is coming from n1 and x2 is coming from n2 and then you can uh, prove that this is a sum module of m and that is the usual sum of n1 uh, and n2 but n1 and n2 individually they are r modules so you can take their direct sum so this n1 direct sum n2 from this direct sum to usual sum you can have this map always so here in this direct sum an element it looks like this tuple where first component is coming from n1 and x2 second component is coming from n2 then you can add them so this map you can always have and by construction this map is always subjective and this is an r, r module homomorphism but this uh, statement it is saying that this is isomorphism so that means extra thing we are having here that this map is injective so this proposition is saying that this map is injective if and only if the intersection of n1 and n2 th uh, this is trivial and third statement it is saying that each x in this usual sum that can be written in this manner that is just by definition but this third statement it is saying that you can write each element in this manner uniquely uh, trivial so you pick something from that intersection then you can see that x comma 0 that is an element in this direct sum because x is there in n1 then its image it is x but you can consider this element also 0 comma x that is also an element in this direct sum because x is there in n2 as well and its image is also x via pi since pi is injective that is the first statement so these two elements they should be this should be same so that means uh, this implies that x would be 0 element. So this intersection it is trivial. 
Next, we should prove 2 implies 3. So here you consider an element x in this usual sum. Then by definition, this x you can write x1 plus x2 where xi is coming from ni. Suppose you have another expression. So suppose you can write x in terms of this sum y1 plus y2 where this yi is also coming from ni. So we need to prove uniqueness here. Since these two expressions they, these are same so that implies that x1 minus y1 that is same as y2 minus x2 and this is an element in this intersection because this difference this is an element of n1 and this difference it is an element of n2 so since these are equal so this is an element of this intersection and since the intersection is trivial this xi it is same as yi for i equal to 1 2. so this proves that 2 implies 3 now 3 implies uh, 1 it is just observation so this map it is always surjective r module homomorphism but using 3 we can prove that this map is actually injective map why because if this thing is 0 if this thing is 0 then uh, you can you can write this thing as 0 plus 0 right you have unique expression like this so that proves that x1 both x1 and x2 this should be 0 so this 3 implies 1 3 implies that this map is injective thus we have that these three conditions uh, are equivalent and we can have a relation between direct sum and usual sum but this proposition we can generalize into uh, a finite collection of sum modules in this manner so you consider a finite collection of sum modules of m let's say n1 n2 up to nk then again you can consider their usual sum so that is just collection of this kind of elements where xi it is coming from ni and this is a sum module of m but each ni this uh, this is r module so you can have this direct sum of this collection so from direct sum to this usual sum you can have this natural map and that is surjective r module homomorphism and this map is injective if and only if you have this condition that nj intersect with sum of all other um, sum modules that is trivial and it happens for each j varies in 1 up to k and third condition it is saying that each element in this usual sum it can be written uniquely in this form so if you have another expression y1 plus up to yk for x then each xi that should be same as yi yeah. you can prove this proposition in similar way by induction on the number of the sum modules so using that uh, proposition we can uh, we can define what is direct internal direct sum so you consider this collection of sum modules then this usual sum of these sum modules we call it internal direct sum if this this thing happens so for each element x if you can write in in this manner that each xi it is coming from ni uniquely then that usual sum we call it internal direct sum because in this case it is just this condition it is just this third condition and we have proved that uh, these three conditions these are equivalent so this usual sum in that case it will be isomorphic to this uh, direct sum so we define that this usual sum 
it is said to be internal direct sum if each element in that usual sum you can write uniquely in this manner yeah in this case also we use same notation so if you have the sum modules n1 up to nk and suppose you have this condition that each element in that usual sum uh, n1 plus up to nk you can write uniquely then it is just isomorphic to direct sum so we call it internal direct sum we should have one example that here you consider this uh, r module where r is the set of real numbers this is just vector space and then we can we can see that it is internal direct sum of these two subspaces or two sum modules what is that so you consider x axis this is your n1 and you consider y axis this is your n2 then this um, module it is just usual sum of n1 and n2 and moreover you can see that each element here uh, x comma y in r2 you can write uniquely in terms of this so x comma y it is just x comma 0 and this is there in the x axis and it is 0 comma y this is there in the y axis and this is unique expression so this sum it is actually isomorphic to direct sum and we call it internal direct sum and why this uh, x axis and y axis you can take any two uh, any two uh, lines passing through origin and l2 and you can argue that this is internal direct sum r2 is internal direct sum of l1 and l2 I'll stop here.